Welcome back to another video on my channel and this is a shorter video and it's all about the new Canon EOS R3 and landscape photography. And that sounds a bit like an unusual topic because the R3 is advertised and sold by Canon as a super fast camera for sports and action. When the EOS R3 was announced, I became super interested in the camera for various reasons. A few of them I will mention in the course of the video. But what made me think a little bit was that the sensor in contrast to the usual 45, 50, now on the Leica M11, 60 megapixel resolution has only 24 megapixels. And a lot of people watching this video will very well and for good reasons argue and say, listen, 24 megapixel is good enough, is plenty of headroom to crop in and is actually exactly what you want for sports and action. You don't want to necessarily have high resolution files. But I nevertheless became super curious, would this camera suit me for landscape photography? So I got it for a week, I tried it out and in the course of the video I'll present my results. And now let's get started. So first of all, why did I become so interested in this Canon camera? Well, first of all, I'm a Canon EOS R5 shooter. I actually like the EOS R5 a lot, although knowing that there were issues with overheating on 8K video and all of that, you can look this up all at YouTube and you will get all the stories. Clearly there's also now a successor for the R5, namely the R5C and uh, people will have very soon the opportunity to try this new camera out, which is a bit more voluminous in terms of the body size, but has active cooling and in this way is no longer overheating when it comes to AK video shooting. I use the EOS R5 a lot for landscape photography, but also people photography. There are also videos about macro shootings and close-ups with that camera on my channel. It's a very universal camera and clearly currently one of the best available cameras in the market and in particular for Canon shooters, I think a very good value proposition. Now the EOS R3 came. And the EOS R3 immediately reminded me a lot in the Nikon C9. And I personally love the Nikon C9. There are plenty of videos on my channel where you can see how excited I am about this new Nikon camera. And the way this camera here is designed, the R3 is very much alike of what Nikon has produced with the C9. And if you look at the two cameras side by side, you have again a lot of similarities to the Nikon story. So here we have the R5 and here we have the R3. And if you change scene into the Nikon world, we would have here the C7 Mark II and here we would have the C9. And there are lots of similarities, but two major differences in these two constellations, one on the Canon side, one on the Nikon side. And the first big difference concerns the sports and action cameras. In contrast to the R3, where we have mechanical and electronic shutter, the C9 has electronic shutter only and no mechanical shutter any longer. And the second difference is that in contrast to the Nikon world where we have on the C7 Mark II and the C9 the same resolution of 45 megapixel, here Canon makes a difference. On the R5 we have 45 megapixel and on the R3 we have quote unquote maybe only 24 megapixel. Let me make a few examples why I find the R3 so much the same as the Nikon C9. First of all, the design of the camera really is in the spirit of sports and action. So you have here landscape mode, you have portrait mode, and you have a very solid hand grip here for the portrait mode. You also have a dedicated shutter button and control elements. And the grip the camera provides to the shooter is very, very well done. I really like it. It is a very robust weather sealed, by the way, very good camera for sports and action. It will not let you down under all shooting and weather conditions. A second similarity between the R3 and the Nikon C9 is that nice layout with lots of customizable buttons and control elements. And I mentioned this in one of my videos where I reviewed the C9 that I really appreciate that because you have these physical control elements which help you for quick access to functions you might need in just a couple of seconds when you have a change in scene or a change in shooting conditions 
or you just want to change the composition of the image. So there are many things you can customize here. And by the way, the way this is done here in the menu is also very similar to how this is done for the Nikon C9. Let me just make an example. If we go here to the customization section, so let me quickly go there. We have it here. You have customized buttons, you have customized dials. If you go to customize buttons, you get in the same way as what you have on the Nikon C9, a layout of your camera body, and it indicates to you with a white dot and a red circle around it, what element you are currently customizing. Then you push the set button here, and then you can make your choice. And that is exactly the same on the Nikon C9. So also here in terms of design, customization, lots of buttons and control elements, the Nikon C9 and the EOS R3, have actually a lot in common. In the same way as on the Nikon C9, you have buttons for quickly accessing the most important shooting parameters. So here it's the quick button or Q button, which Canon shooters know so well. You go on that. And then what is also common with the Nikon C9, and by the way, there is an excellent video by Jared Pollen on YouTube, where he compares Sony, Canon, the R3, and the Nikon C9 in terms of focus tracking, focus speed, and recognizing and detecting actually subjects by itself via the autofocus options you have. And uh, I fully recommend that video. It's a great video. I think it provides a lot of data points you might want to know. And here it works in the same way. So you can work with this menu here, like always in Canon EOS R cameras, and you can then customize here, for instance, your metering, you have here your autofocus options, so one point autofocus, expand autofocus areas, flexible zones, whole area, and so on. Clearly, if you wanna track, you need to go here to servo, and uh, you can also choose high speed burst rate, and in this way, capture very fast moving subjects in action and sports scenes in your workflow in photography. As I said, the two big differences between the R3 and the C9 is the sensor resolution. Here we have 24, on the C9 we have 45 megapixel. And then the other big difference which you find here in the menu is actually on the shutter side. And here you can choose between mechanical, electronic first curtain, and then electronic. And on the Nikon C9 you have electronic shutter only, which by the way is the fastest electronic shutter I've ever seen side by side with the Sony A1. Now this video was not intended to provide you with a full review of the Canon EOS R3. First of all, I think is a really good camera. As I said at the beginning, I had it for a week. I have to return it now, but uh, I had a lot of fun shooting that camera. And the lens I'm using for my landscape test is actually one of my favorite zoom lenses on the Canon EOS R system. It's the 28 to 70 millimeter Canon lens and it has a constant aperture of f2.0 and that is something I find super cool. It's a very heavy lens if you look at it and there is a review on my channel where I introduced that lens, showed sample images and explained everything you want to know about that fantastic Canon lens. It's a lot of glass, it makes the lens camera combo very heavy but it is worthwhile any gram you are carrying because the image quality is fantastic. And what I wanted to show in this video is how is it for a high resolution shooter like I am to shoot with a 24 megapixel sensor. And here are a few general remarks. First of all, if you are blogging and need photos, let's say in fashion, beauty, art, whatever it is, 24 megapixel is in my opinion, always enough. You don't need more resolution. If you are in sports and action photography, you don't really need 45 megapixel. Actually for the speed of the shooting, but also in post-processing, it might be much more convenient to have 24 megapixel instead of 45 megapixel. The same applies in general to people photography. If you have 45, 50 or on the Leica M11 now 60 megapixel, you will have more work in post-processing, cleaning up the face of the model, removing any pimples, making sure there is no hair in the skin where it shouldn't be and all of that. It might be even a curse to have a resolution going beyond 24 megapixel in beauty and people photography. So in general, 24 is always enough and there is one exception, for me at least. I love high resolution landscape photography. I love high resolution cities and cityscapes in particular at night and in general, I like to have these reserves and I'm also very often going also for clients for very large dimensional prints. And then it is important for me to be able to shoot with more than 24 megapixel resolution. So I thought why not trying out that camera and uh, trying to create a workflow where I hold the camera in portrait mode, shoot several frames 
and then stitch them together in Photoshop and Lightroom. And that worked astonishingly well. And I'm very happy and pleased with the results, which I wanna show you now. And in this way, maybe creating an argument it is a fantastic camera for sports and action. Most of the time, 24 megapixel will be enough. And if you are a Canon shooter, you don't have to become jealous and have a look at the Nikon side where you get this type of camera and value proposition with 45 megapixel. You can also stitch together in a very nice way, super high resolution landscape photos if you just create the right workflow for it. And that's what I did in this week when I had the camera. And now let's go into sample images and let's discuss my results. Let's start with a simple picture here. So that is the 24 megapixel resolution. I show here on the upper left hand side the metadata. So it's shot with the 28 to 70 millimeter f2 lens from Canon. It's the Canon EOS R3 of course. That's what this video is all about. 180 seconds exposure f5.6 ISO 640 28 millimeter. So that's the widest setting I get on the focal length side here. And it's what I would call a clean image. So going to 100% crop here looks quite nice. I think that's okay. And that's what you typically achieve with a 24 megapixel sensor is enough resolution, I think, for medium sized prints. Here, another typical example that is a landscape image, of course. It's shot with 24 megapixel, but I cropped in a little bit. So that's not the full 6K times 4K resolution as you can see here in the upper left hand side corner. And again, it's a very clean image. ISO was here 500. All of the images I'm showing here are shot hand hold. And I think you get plenty of detail in these images. It looks good. I also like the coloring and the light changed a little bit in the course of that morning here. I think is a good result and is what you can expect from the sensor in the EOS R3. Here, last example of a single shot, which I wanted to show. So in this morning, the light changed quickly and you see here nice coloring from the morning sun and you see that winter atmosphere, which I think makes a very special atmosphere in an image. And again, is a very clean shot here. So this is now an ISO of 250. 1 over 60 seconds handhold since the Canon EOS R3 has in-body image stabilization and I shoot it as I did here at 31 millimeter on that perfect zoom lens. You don't have any issues with uh, let's say vibrations or shakes. That all looks good and going to 100% crop here you see there is plenty of detail in that image and as I said in an earlier part of the video 24 megapixel typically is plenty of space for almost everything you want to do. Nevertheless, I personally like high resolution landscape images and that's the topic we are going to look into now in the next frames. In order now to generate a super high resolution landscape panorama image, I rotated the camera by 90 degrees into portrait mode and I also did choose here a 16 to 9 crop ratio in order to make sure that in the vertical direction my images appear a bit longer. So that's not the usual three to two ratio you have here in terms of aspect. And I took here, let's quickly count this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 images with a lot of overlap. So it's very easy for Photoshop or Lightroom to stitch them together to a large scale panorama shot. And uh, since you have in the portrait mode on the EOS R3 in the same way as on the Nikon C9, that wonderful hand grip, with dedicated shutter button, you can shoot this handhold is not a problem at all. And Photoshop and Lightroom will do it in the same way, stitches it together in the perfect way. So you have here a high resolution, large scale, large dimension panorama shot capturing in a very wide field of view, everything that's in front of the camera in the scene. And the resolution here is insanely high. So we talk about 19.2K times 5.8K, which equates to roughly 111 megapixel. So with a 24 megapixel, no problem at all. The process is super smooth. It's handhold shooting just in portrait mode by rotating the camera by 90 degrees, having a dedicated shutter button, just taking the frames with enough overlap, stitching them together and et voila, here is your super high resolution landscape panorama. What I also did here is I tweaked a little bit in post-processing the colors in the sky. And uh, that also shows that I can make these morning lights visible a very good dynamic range of the 24 megapixel sensor in the EOS R3. And based on that super high resolution of 111 megapixel, give or take, you have, if you crop in here by 100%, fantastic details in the image. That looks really, really good and is absolutely at par with everything you could achieve with a higher resolution sensor just by creating the right workflow. Look at these houses here. 
Look at the mountains and the lake here. In the valley, it looks really good. It's a super clean image. It's shot at an ISO of 250 and uh, I think this is a fantastic result. Here's the last example I wanted to show. So this time it was a bit later in the morning. I went for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten portrait mode shots, handhold, and then stitch them together to a large resolution panorama shot. And here's the result. Looks very nice. This time is 18K times 5.7K and is a very nice shot with, again, plenty of detail, good dynamic range coming from the sensor of the EOS R3. And uh, as we look into that here and crop in, you find so many details in this image here. There's absolutely nothing to complain. You can do super high resolution shots with that camera easily with the right workflow and uh, by just using the capabilities you have in post-processing. Look at the village here in the valley. So many details, so nice, so crisp, or here more in the foreground, that house here with the car in front of it and the barn in the background. Very nice. I like these images a lot. Here is Mountain Rigi, which is a very famous mountain in that region. And you even see here on top the antenna and the tower. And I think this is proof of evidence that 24 megapixel, if you have many reasons why you prefer that and why you prefer the R3 workflow and the R3 setup, you can nevertheless go for whatever resolution you want if you create it in a way that you use image stitching and uh, for instance, use the excellent portrait mode on the camera with that dedicated hand grip. I hope you liked that video and I provided some useful data points for you, but most importantly, some sample images about high resolution landscape photos with a 24 megapixel sensor. And I think if you're a Canon shooter, you don't have to become jealous and look over your fence to the Nikon world because this camera is fantastic for sports and action. You see this in many videos on YouTube. I tried it when I did shoot the camera. I think it's a really good camera for sports and action and for most applications, 24 megapixel is enough. But if you wanna go for high resolution landscapes or cityscapes, this camera is very well suitable too. If you create the right workflow as I did, by shooting several frames, stitching them together and then taking them into post-processing. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.